All right, stick her up. And get in at the negotiation. Hello again. Um, no computers this time, I promise. Uh, I think about a couple of videos ago I said I would show you um, the initial look at this, this uh, Bush radio uh, type DAC90 which, uh, which is coming to my possession. Um, I have one of these a little bit later model working but uh, this one uh, is just coming to my possession and I, uh, I haven't done anything to it at all. So this video is going to be about the initial look um, inside and seeing what it is um, and then the initial power up and I have no idea what's going to happen here because as far as I know it's not been powered up for many years. The only thing I've done is downloaded the um, the uh, trader sheet for it, the Bush DAC90 and I learned from this that it was built in 1946 and at its um, launch it costs £11.11 11 shillings and this was increased a little bit later to £12.12 12 shillings so it, um, it went up a little bit but that was in, that was in those days. Um, so what this video is going to be about, the first part of it, this, this bit, is going to be looking at this, um, opening the back and then doing a safe power up um, after a few continuity checks. So let's get started. So there's the radio. Um, the speaker fret's not in very good condition. Uh, the cabinet itself is quite um, dull. Uh, we could do with the polish. Um, and there's some obvious damage here. Um, I'm not sure if the dial drive works. Yes, it does. Um, the dial drive works and it's not too stiff either. The on off switch sounds reasonably good. Um, the next step is to look around the back and have a look inside. Well, looking at the back of the machine, um, you can see it's fitted with a, it's an AC-DC set um, and it's fitted with one of these, um, it's very tight. Goodness me, I can't move it. It's fitted with one of these two pin plugs and a very grotty piece of mains cable and the back um, doesn't appear to have any screws on it at all. So at the moment let's just move that out of the way and have a quick look inside. Well, um, I don't think this is going to power up. There's a one of the, uh, this is the mains dropper um, resistor here and you see these various um, connections on it to, to, to change the voltage. One of the things with these radios was that it, that got so hot that you can see it's burnt the back of the, uh, of the cover out. Um, and not only has it got hot, but this is... Um, yeah, there's bare wires everywhere here. Um, I don't, there's insulation off it, I think, um, and that is actually broken off the resistor. So I don't think, um, it's certainly not going to be safe to power up anyway, um, but uh, initially I'm going to remove it from the cabinet um, and give it a clean out. But that is a real grot radio inside. Um, let's have a, a little bit closer look. Yeah, that doesn't look good, does it? Um, and this particularly doesn't look good at all. Um, so the next step is to um, try and find out what's going on with this radio and give it a bit of a clean up. Well, there's a shot with uh, most of the dust removed just using a, a vacuum cleaner. And now to take it out the cabinet, we well, have to take the controls off. And to do that, I've had to take this valve out, which is a, um, what is it? A CCH35, a Mullard valve, 
treat it very carefully and put it to one side and then that allows access to the um, the uh, control um, knob retaining screw so let's uh, let's get that one out as with these radials the screws are released from um, underneath so the knobs are released from underneath so let's first of all take out the tone knob um, a few cobwebs in there there it is off and now um, with the two knobs three knobs removed um, we can slide the radio I would think out of the back so here's the moment of truth um, we're going to actually remove the chassis from the cabinet which I doubt whether it's been out for many many years No, after a cursory look around underneath, I can't see anything else retaining it. So it now should pull out of the. Uh, there's cables here connecting this, of course, connecting the aerial. So I'm going to have to release these these two cables. Let's try this now, and here it comes. Wow, and there was another cable here which I didn't release, never mind. Okay, um, so that's out of its chassis. Let's turn it over and have a look. Oh my goodness me, what an awful mess of cobwebs. Um, not unexpected mind but uh, that is a bit of a mess isn't it so the old cleaner is going to go on that again um, now so now it's out of the cabinet um, it is pretty grimy uh, let's have a first check of the speaker because that might be causing some problems. There's no holes in it as such and it's moving okay. So I guess well, that's pretty hopeful actually. Um, let's have a little uh, a little clean up here and see actually what's going on with this. Yeah that's absolutely filthy. Very careful not to damage that very 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 fine dowel drive cord there. I don't want to start getting into replacing that um, with the wire and the springs and everything else. Um, so there we have it. That's the radio um, out of its cabinet. Um, <coughs> uh, it's in a very poor condition. I mean it's very very dirty. I guess it's been stored somewhere for quite a long time without any um, and, and it may be a damp area because there's some bits of rust on it uh, but I think our main problem is going to be this um, where that's connecting to and what it's actually doing um, certainly I'm not going to attempt to apply any mains on it here's the main selector here and I guess that one's okay, but um, that is certainly broken off. Now whether that resistor has got continuity through it to that area, I don't know. Um, that's it for now. I'm not... Oh, the tuning capacitor is uh, working. 
but it's very again very very dirty and that, that seems to be working as well um, okay that's it no idea whether it will power up yeah, so most of these capacitors down here um, are paper capacitors and I guess they all will need replacing um, and uh, so we'll have to get around to that but I think first of all we need to see whether it will power up at all um, once I've sorted out that mains dropper well I did say this was going to be a two-part video but now it all depends on whether I can sort the uh, dropper resistor out and get hold of some replacement high power resistors and also check the rest of the radio um, as with all these uh, old radios um, it's problematic and when you get into it you find other things that need fixing so I will be getting back to you um, with a decision on whether this is worth going ahead with but in the meantime thanks for watching and take care Alright, stick around. I'll get in at the negotiation. Alright, you are right. The negotiation is a far more expensive than the matter. Time to raise money.